Hey everybody, welcome back to Whiteboard Finance. My name is Marco and I'm here to help you master your money and build your wealth. In today's video, I'm gonna talk about my favorite Bitcoin books for beginners that are absolute must reads for you to truly and deeply understand Bitcoin to its core. Uh, there's a lot of people that read an article that lasts maybe three minutes and they think they uh, understand everything about Bitcoin. And I can tell when interacting with these people online or reading comments made by them, uh, they're just not informed. And that's why they don't understand how powerful Bitcoin is. Uh, so it took me a long time to go down the Bitcoin rabbit hole. I first heard about it in 2013 when I was working at a tech startup here in Cleveland. Uh, my CTO bought two Bitcoin, uh, end up hitting like... 900 or or $1,000 per Bitcoin right around there. And since I was coming from a traditional financial background, uh, I completely dismissed it and didn't give it any uh, second thought. Uh, that is until we saw the next cycle where it hit $20,000 per Bitcoin, and that's when my interest got peaked in it. So this is right around 2018 or so. So uh, these books that I'm going to show you, you should read these in order, okay? It's important that you read these in order to build a strong foundation, kind of like building a pyramid, and then uh, the, the books that are more food for thought are at the end. But the first ones that I recommend to you are absolutely mandatory reading. Uh, so without further ado, let's get right into it. So book number one is going to be The Bullish Case for Bitcoin. Uh, this is written by my friend Vijay Boyapati. Uh, I've had him on my podcast, The Whiteboard Finance Show. Uh, it's a very good episode. Uh, he's basically an ex-Google software engineer. Right now, I believe he's either semi-retired or a senior software engineer right now. Uh, but he first published this book as a long-form article um, on Medium. And if, you know, if you're familiar with Medium, that's absolutely free. You can type this into Google and get this uh, article for free, or you can read the expanded version in this book. So I'm not going to give away, um, you know, core pieces of what these books are, but I will give you a general idea of what they're about. So the bullish case for Bitcoin basically goes into, um, you know, the history of money a little bit, but then it goes into comparing uh, Bitcoin to fiat, which is, you know, any government's mandatory de facto currency like the U.S. dollar, for example, um, versus fiat versus gold. And this is a very compelling read and it will actually get your wet your beak or dip your toes into the Bitcoin world. Number two is Inventing Bitcoin. Uh, this is written by Jan Pritzker, who is the CEO of Swan or CTO, excuse me, of Swan Bitcoin. Uh, I've also had him on my podcast as well. So inventing Bitcoin is important, and it's my second recommendation for you uh, because this is basically a layman's guide to the technical aspect of Bitcoin and how it actually works. Um, so I think this is the biggest weakness of most people where they fail to understand why Bitcoin is so uh, intriguing and why its value proposition is so important is because they don't really understand the math and the technology behind Bitcoin and how it actually works. Um, this book will explain to you why Bitcoin is pretty much the hardest money or the hardest form of money ever created by humans, which is, this is the icing on the cake after you read the first two. This is book number three. This is the Bitcoin standard. Okay, this is written by Safety Dina Moose. Um, he is an Austrian economist. If you understand Austrian economic principles, you will understand that they are proponents of hard and sound money. So these are people that believe in a gold standard, um, you know, not just random trillions of dollars of printing, which we've seen over the last couple of years that usually precedes the fall of an empire because they have to fund wars and things like that. But the Bitcoin standard is a great book because it talks about, uh, it doesn't even talk about Bitcoin that much, to be quite honest. The, the, the biggest part of this book is actually understanding what is money, um, why gold um, used to be the gold standard, why it's now obsolete, and why Bitcoin is a better version and a better form of gold, if you will. Uh, number four is Layered Money. This is by my friend Nick Badia, who I've also had on the podcast. Uh, this is talking about from basically gold and Bitcoin, um, or excuse me, from like the gold florin in uh, Florence uh, to layered money, to basically saying, hey, uh, we started with the barter system, then we started with gold as the next layer, then we started as fiat as the next layer, and then the next layers are inevitably going to be cryptocurrencies, specifically Bitcoin, and then central bank digital currencies. So I've talked about CBDCs a lot on this channel, um, and I think this is a really, really good book for you to better understand you know, the layers of money, if you will. 
Um, so who knows if Bitcoin will ever be a world reserve currency. But at the time of this recording, there's a conflict going on in Russia and Ukraine. People are already using Bitcoin uh, to get outside of, you know, the SWIFT banking system, traditional finance, making donations, things like that. So uh, this next one, uh, before I get into it, 21 lessons that I learned. This is written by Gigi. He is a uh, anonymous or pseudonymous uh, Bitcoiner who's on a lot of podcasts that I listen to. Uh, this is basically his 21 lessons, what he's learned from falling down the Bitcoin rabbit hole. Um, this one is more philosophical, but since he is a software engineer, it does contain a lot of uh, a lot of programming jargon and why Bitcoin is so important. It's almost kind of like inventing Bitcoin, uh, the second book on the list, um, but it's a little bit more philosophical as well. Number six is thank God for Bitcoin. Uh, this is the creation, uh, corruption, and redemption of money. Uh, this has multiple authors. It has about eight authors, which you can see here on the back of the book. Um, Robert Breedlove, who I've had on my podcast, talking about what is money. Um, Jimmy Song, who's very famous. J.M. Bush. There, there's a bunch of people that helped write this book. It's a very, very good book. This actually focuses more on like Christian principles. Uh, so not to bring religion into the channel, but uh, this actually ties a lot of what, you know, the Bible and Christian teachings talk about, um, not just money, but also about like usury, uh, which is interest, making money from money, and then also rent-seeking behavior. Uh, so this talks about how, you know, farmers need to reap what they sow. Um, you know, if you want to work out and have a nice body, for example, you can't fake that. You know, you can't just pay for that. You have to put in the work. So that's why proof of work is huge in the Bitcoin system. And uh, this uh, pulls a lot of examples from uh, the Bible. This is written by uh, primarily Christian people, uh, Orthodox Christians and other types of Christians as well, Catholics. Um, but it's a very, very, very interesting book talking mostly about rent-seeking behavior and people who simply just try and leech off of others, which is not possible on a Bitcoin standard. So thank God for Bitcoin is pretty cool. Um, this book is written by another person who I've had on the podcast, uh, Jeff Booth, uh, very, very, very successful entrepreneur. This is a book called The Price of Tomorrow. This book is not specifically about Bitcoin. This book is actually um, talking about how technology is inherently deflationary. So you know every year how TVs, for example, they get nicer and nicer and bigger and bigger and the picture is better and better and the processes are fa processors are faster and faster than ever before, but the price of TVs goes down for the value provided or relatively stays the same, right? So if you remember 20, 30 years ago, your dad brings home a big screen TV, it takes up half the living room. If you look at uh, computers from 20, 30 years ago, they're huge. Now, um, you know, you can see that some computers sit in the palm of our hand, for example, such as a smartphone, uh, and then you have TVs that are getting better and better, but the price goes down. Those are just two quick examples. But ultimately, his thesis is that technology is deflationary. Um, so as we move into the future, you know, the prices of things should be going down. But when it comes to inflation, which is the system that we're used to and the system that we're all a part of, um, we live in an inflationary monetary environment, uh, a.k.a. the U.S. dollar, for example, um, and most countries do. I mean, all countries do. Um, we should be seeing more deflation uh, because of technology. Um, so The Price of Tomorrow is a great book. Not specifically about Bitcoin, but it's definitely in there. Um, and the last two that are going to cook your noodle, um, these were written many, many years ago. So this first one is going to be The Sovereign Individual. This was written in 1999. This was written by James Davidson and William Reese Mogg. Um, this has nothing to do with Bitcoin. In fact, this uh, book came out 10 years before Bitcoin was even an idea. Uh, but this basically talks about the shift from an industrial-based society to an information-based society, okay? So we have the fourth stage of human society basically liberating individuals um, from governments or altering the power of governments because people are going to become sovereign individuals as opposed to relying on representatives to think for them or act on their behalf kind of a thing. So this ties into Bitcoin. It's a big Bitcoin book because Bitcoin is all about holding your wealth um, and being that sovereign individual. So I did a video on this a couple weeks ago, how you can literally just remember 24 words and you can hold your wealth in your pocket or in your brain or, you know, wherever. So, you know, heaven forbid civil war breaks out or whatever, you can flee to another haven 
as long as you have those 24 words stored in your head. So this book is similar to uh, Ray Dalio's Changing of the New World Order video, uh, which just came out about a week ago. I highly recommend you all check out that video. And then uh, bonus, again, this is not a Bitcoin book, but it's important to understand where we're at in stages of society. This book is called The Fourth Turning. Uh, it was written in 1997, and it's incredible how accurate this book actually is about you know, 30 years later, so uh, 25 years later. So this was written by William Strauss and Neil Howe. Uh, basically, this talks about the cycles of history, showing what's in store for the American empire. Uh, so empires typically have stages. They have their confident expansion. Uh, they have their awakening. They have their rebellious phase. Then they have the unraveling and the distrust of big institutions, okay, which we're kind of seeing over the past 15, 20 years when it comes to uh, military industrial complex, banking, Wall Street getting bailed out in 2008, no one going to jail, et cetera, et cetera. So it basically boils down to growth, uh, maturation, uh, entropy, and the rebirth of a society. So these are the books I got for you. Um, I promise you, if you read these books, uh, it will change your perspective on a lot of things when it comes to uh, money, politics, finance, things like that. Um, and what I wanted to note is, is that I've been following all this stuff pretty much since uh, 1999, since I was a kid. Uh, the reason for that was um, certain countries got bombed in 1999, <laughs> uh, and that just got me down the whole you know, political, geopolitical rabbit hole. Um, I've always been a big fan of history. I've always been a big fan of finance before it was cool. I feel like a lot of people are getting into finance now because of movies like The Big Short or you know, uh, Wolf of Wall Street with Leonardo DiCaprio, for example. Um, you know, finance was never really that popular. Um, same thing with Bitcoin, which I didn't even go down until, you know, the past four years or so, five years or so. First heard about it in 2013, uh, didn't swallow my pride until 2018. And then once you understand this stuff, it all makes sense with the things that you've already known. So great financial crisis happened in 2008. Um, and once you go down the Bitcoin rabbit hole, it all ties together and you understand what time it is. Um, check out Ray Dalio's Changing of the New World Order. It has nothing to do with Bitcoin, but you can see where Bitcoin plays a role. Um, and then also on the Patrick David Bet or Bet David, or I always get confused with these people with 17 first names. Patrick Bet David, Patrick David Bet, whatever. Uh, his podcast, Michael Saylor, was on there um, about a week or two ago. Unbelievable podcast. Once you understand all this stuff, you know what time it is and it all starts to make sense. Thank you so much, everybody. Have a prosperous day.